this is the structure of a ribosome which is the unit that makes protein by translating the mrna mrna consists of codons which are consisting of three nucleotides together now each codon represents a particular amino acid and that is brought about by the trna that is around there each trna is assigned for binding with a particular type of amino acid and they will bind that amino acid and hold on to that and bring it together on, and sit on to the mrna while the ribosome provides the machinery to translate that and add the, each amino acid with each other to produce the peptide chain now you can see here there are three different regions for the trna binding considerably called as e side p side and a site a site means the region where trna along with a single amino acid binds p site is the region where the peptide bonds between the amino acids formed and e site is the region which is called as excess site through which the uncharged trna are released now this animation will focus on the whole process of protein synthesis and how it is done here comes the mrna and it will sit trna actually sit on to the mrna and based on the presence of the start codon which is depicted here as this yellow colored region and it is placed in the p side section and this is called so let's let's begin with uh, the whole process again now now the different stages of protein synthesis are three majorly first stage is the initiation phase and in the initiation phase it starts with uh, the 50s subunit it start with the 30s subunit and the initiation factor 3 so actually what happens at the very beginning we don't need 50s and 30s subunit to be fused for that reason initiation factor 3 bind with the 30s subunit as a result 50s subunit will not get any room to be attached with it and then they will bring about two other factors these are called initiation factor 1 and initiation factor 2 both of the factors along with the gtp will bind to the 30s subunit specific region now after the gtp hydrolysis so after this binding they will bring upon the first charged trna into the place and that is called as f met trna because the amino acid there is formylated methionine so that formylated methionine containing amino acid will bind and then the mrna will also come and sit in a position after this process of mrna attachment the initiation factor 3 releases the place and the gtp gets phosphor and and then after binding of after the release of initiation factor 3 50s subunit can easily bind and upon binding of 50s subunit the gtp got hydrolyzed and rest of the initiation factor 1 and 2 are getting released so now what we get is a proper construction of the protein translation machinery that is consisting of 30s and 50s subunit holding the mrna and the fmet trna content now let's talk about the second phase of the protein synthesis and that is called as the elongation phase involving the factors called as elongation factor in this place we have the elongation factor u or efu so this is the elongation factor u along with another gtp because all these proteins are g proteins so the elongation factor u along with the gtp will come and they will attach with the next trna that is called the charged trna to the place and it will bind them together into the a site of this ribosome upon binding them then they have the process called peptidyl transferase reaction where uh, the amino acid from the first trna will be transferred to the next trna and that is very very important stage and for this process they need to hydrolyze the gtp that is present in a eftu after that this eftu along with the gdp is no longer functional so we need to replace this gdp in the eftu so that it gets functional again so in that place we have another protein called efts so this is the efts protein that protein actually goes there and this efts help to replace the gt gdp instead of i mean replace the gtp instead of gdp with the eftu region and that's what it does after this process is done we have more and more active eftu proteins because we require more and more eftu for the future purpose so once the eftu part is done we have the second elongation factor that is efg 
Now, this elongation factor g denoted here with this g like structure along with again another GTP comes into the place and it will bind to the 50th subunit region. And upon binding of this EFT, EFG and GTP structure, it will create certain shuttle uh, morphologic and structural change in the, in, the, in the ribosome. As a result of that, it will just pull this mRNA forward in little bit. After this mRNA is dragged there, we can see those tRNA changes the position, one position apart. So, previously the tRNA that is present at the P site, now the, this is at the E site and the tRNA present at the A site is now at the P site and A site becomes free for binding of the new tRNA. Now, once this process is done, the GTP got hydrolyzed and the EFG is released and then they will bring upon another EFTU and bring upon another charged tRNA, it got hydrolyzed, then the peptidyl transfer is occurs and you can see here then again EFG and EFG along with GTP binds structural change hydrolysis of the GTP and we have again a site free so that's the process of elongation once you understand the process of elongation now it comes a process of termination and this is the last stage of the protein synthesis in the termination phase again there are many more termination factor they are required they are called as the release factor and brings the first enzyme. So, let's say it, it starts doing and adding many more protein sequences with each other. As you can see here, it's now filled with protein amino acid sequences and it kinds of produce a polypeptide chain. The process of termination initiates when they encounter a sequence called the stop codon. There are three codons denoted as the stop codon. If they reach any one of those three codons, in that case, they will bring upon a new release factor instead of the tRNA. Though the release factor is called as release factor 1, which is this one, is having a re remarkable structural similarity with the normal tRNA structure. So, they kind of mimics the tRNA structure here. They have two different sections. One section is the anticodon loop to bind with the stop codon and detecting it, and another loop which is present here acting as a peptidase activity enzyme loop. And this peptidase loop will cut the peptide bond present already. So, it will bind after binding it will cut the peptide group there as you can see here the peptide group is cut and the polypeptide is released outside and then they will bring upon the enzyme this is called the release factor 2 and this release factor 2 along with the GDP will bind and they will bind upon binding of release factor 2 with GDP to the release factor 1 they change the conformation of the release factor 1 and as a result release factor 1 is released and this GDP will lose, uh, they, they get the GTP, uh, this GDP is replaced by the GTP and the GTP got hydrolyzed and release factor 2 is also released. Then they will bring up on another factor that is called the ribosome release factor and RRF. Now this is the factor which is responsible for dissociation of the whole compartments. So ribosome release factor will come and sit on to the terminal part and then they will bring upon the elongation factor G, EFG with the GTP. Upon binding of elongation factor G with the GTP to the place of 50 subunit, it will finally hydrolyze itself, the GTP will be hydrolyzed. As a result, it will, it will turn into another final structural shift. As a result, all the materials are released out. So, you can see as a result, all these uh, tRNAs are kind of released outside. Now, the position as you can see is that one tRNA bind at the E site and the RRF is placed at the P site and there will no longer amino, amino acid containing tRNA will be present at A site because the process is done. So, after that they will bring upon the last molecule here that is the initiation factor 3. Remember, we started with this initiation factor 3. So, the initiation factor 3 will come and bind with the position and binding of this initiation factor 3. 3 will ultimately release the 50th subunit because it will change the structure of 30th subunit as a result 50th subunit will no longer have the affinity to bind with it and it will be released outside and thus all the materials all the enzymes and protein structures will be released outside and that completes the process of protein synthesis. The protein synthesis process in eukaryotes and prokaryotes are kind of similar in most of the aspects and that's kind of it guys thank you.